Hello and welcome to Winslow Academy. In this tutorial we are going to look at network basics. This is part 1 and we will dive into the OSI model in this lecture. So, what is networking? Well, networking or a network is two or more devices that is connected and can thereby communicate with each other. And that is really what we are going to focus on in this entire course that we have multiple devices that are able to talk to each other. So we are going to look at how such can happen. And when we say networking it might sound kinda simple because when we say oh we are just communicating over a network or we are just sending uh, information. But you can compare it to shipping. When you're talking about shipping that also sounds very simple. But when you dive into the different aspects of shipping a parcel, as we see in the picture right here, there are so many different steps that someone has to take care of before the package gets from the shop where you bought it to your front door. And it is the same with networking. Whenever we are doing something online, there is a lot of steps that is happening behind the scene and that can be broken down through the OSI model, which we are going to talk about in this lecture. So the OSI model, this is the network model that is defining all the aspects that are happening when we are doing communication over a network and it consists of seven layers. So we have layer one, the physical layer, which is the lowest layer and the lowest level where we have the electric bytes and cables, whereas we have layer seven, which is the application, meaning the application and front end that you're interacting with, which is the highest level. And then we have these different layers in between. So before we get into the different layers, it's more important that we understand how this OSI model actually works. So even though that we now know there are these several layers, it's important to see how this is working in practice. So for example, if we have computer A right here and computer B right here, then a person on computer A is going to send something to computer B. He is starting on the application layer and then he is working or the computer and the electronics within his computer is working its way down from application layer all the way down to the different layers until it reaches the physical layer and then it is going to be transferred over to computer B which is starting from the lowest layer and then working its way up until it is capable of presenting the data that computer A sent. So this is how the OSI model works. It starts from the top in the one end all the way down and it goes from the bottom up in the other end to them. So we have the first layer, which is the physical layer. And as I mentioned before, this is the lowest level. So this is cable and bytes. It is here we have the electric um, voltages happening and it is here we have our network interface card. And it is also here we have our cables. So this is on, on the very basics where it is not code anymore, but uh, electric impulses that is getting transferred through the cable. Then we have the layer 2 which is the data link layer and this is where we package our bytes into frames and it is also in this layer that we have our MAC addresses on our computer which is a unique address that is hard coded into your network card meaning that compared to an IP address is something that you can change whenever you want. You cannot change your MAC address. You can do MAC address spoofing, but that is a totally uh, another thing. But again, you can simply change this. So this is the layer two where we are using MAC addresses if we are going to communicate. Then we have the layer three, which is one step above, and this is where we get introduced to the IP addresses. Whereas before, before in layer two relied on MAC addresses, we are now using IP addresses. So an IP address is really a logical address and it is therefore not hard-coded. So it is something that can be changed when we are in need of a new one. And therefore it is not a unique address because either it can be changed on your local machine internally within a network or your internet service provider can change it in their setup. So it is not something that is hard-coded. And it is also this layer that is doing the network routing. So whenever you 
are using a router for example, that is a layer 3 device because it is distributing packages based on the different IPs and it is sorting who is going to get what based on the IP addresses on the packages that is going to be transferred. Then we have the layer 4 which is the transport layer. This is the manage and control layer where we are starting to see different um, ways of transferring information. For example we have the TCP and UDP which is two different protocols for the TCP we are in need of getting identified and verified that our data is reaching our target so if we are using a TCP protocol whenever we are sending something out we need to get a response back saying I got this package send me a new one but if we use UDP which is the one that is most likely being used uh, on all streaming services and especially YouTube we are just throwing packages as, um, through uh, was our target and we don't really care if they receive them in the right order we are just spamming them with data because if we needed an confirmation for each packages then the load time will be tremendous and that is not really smart so this is in the layer 4 that we are dealing with these two different protocols and it is also where we are splitting the communication that is coming from the layers above layer 4 down into these packages. Then we have the layer 5 which is the section, the session layer. This is the layer that is controlling our traffic meaning that it is the layer that is establishing and it is managing and it is terminating our connection. And it also co coordinates this communication and take charge of how much we are allowed to send and when we are allowed to send it. So whenever you are going online it is the layer for that is taking charge of establishing the connection when you are getting connected to something online and it is also the layer 5 that is in charge of terminating this connection so that we don't have thousands of connections if we when we are done using them then we have the layer 6 which is the presentation layer this is the layer that is right below the application layer so this is where our data is getting transformed <coughs> into a format that our application can understand. So for example when we have some packages that got sent to us it is the layer 6 that is transforming it into for example XML or doing encryption or decryption on it before it is presented in the application. So the last layer, layer 7, the application layer, this is where our data is presented and this is where we are getting access from our application to the network and this can happen over HTTP, FTP, SMTP based on what we are going to do if it's mail, simply web browsing or file transfer. So this was a quick overlook of the seven layers in the OSI model. In the next lectures we will dig, dig deeper into each of them along <coughs> the way to understand this complex area of networking. So see you in the next lecture.